special as we gather in your name and sing praise to you and, and listen to your word and uh, read and pray together. So I thank you and I thank you for all the kids and all the families here and the joy of this day. Pray that the technology would stay strong for those watching at home, that they might participate as well. We thank you that they can do that as well. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a couple of quick announcements. We're hoping that your preschool kids after their portion, that they can they can sit and stay in here for the rest of the service. If they get a little bit fidgety, the uh, the preschool room is available, but we would ask that a parent would go with them if you need to take them out. But we don't mind the noise. We truly don't. Um, the Hanover Church will tell you that we love to hear the kids. For the littler ones, the, the, the little, little brothers and sisters, um, after the preschool kids do their songs and everything, after that point, the nursery is available. And my wife and, and my, my girls are, will be back there for the little, little ones. So um, they're welcome to go back there as well. Hopefully that make, made sense to you all. Um, before we sing, I'll give you some uh, motions for you to participate in. But if you would stand, uh, Roy Cooper is going to lead us. In the call to worship, it will be on the screen. Let's stand and read it together. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, all you people. For His merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All right, as our praise team gets, comes up here and gets ready to uh, lead you in singing, your preschoolers know the motions to all of these songs, okay? So guys, preschoolers, you going to do the motions with us? Should I teach, should I remind you what they are? All right, I'll go up front here and give you all the, the tutorial, make a little uh, spectacle here. So the first one... Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Woo-hoo! Nice lob, right? 
Every step I take, I take in you. You are the way, Jesus. Spin around. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Guys this is the easy part. Waves of mercy, waves okay. of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, Lord God, this love, how can it be? And then the next one, Lord, I lift your name. Or you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You preschool guys and girls know it. Do the motions, have fun, and then sing praise to the Lord.
All right, this next one, preschoolers, you know the chorus to this one, and you know it and sing it so well. Let's praise the King of Kings.
joy can impart. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news. For every and anyone in Christ, they are your creation. Everything always pass away. See, everything is coming. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. But all those forgiven, reconciled, new creations in Christ, shout, Hosanna. Let's Hosanna! have some songs and some scriptures they want to share with all of you this morning. So Raya, if you could start the Jesus Loves Me medley. Yeah. 
already done this one once, but you can never hear it enough. Let's sing nice and loud. Let's sing Jesus Love. Jesus loves me. and stuff on the stage. It's incredible. He has a song where he says, I was made to love and be loved by you. And the you he's referring to is God. Toby Mack loves the Lord Jesus and sings to glorify his name. And he said, I was made to love and be loved by you. The other thing I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind is actually a quote from Jesus. One that he said while he was praying. He said this. 
This is eternal life that they, they being the disciples and anyone who would read it down through the ages, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That they may know you, God, that they may be in a relationship with you. So keep those quotes in the back of your mind as I share this gospel message. Gospel literally means good news. And if there's good news, that means there must also be bad news. The bad news is that apart from God, every single one of us is a sinful creature. The Apostle Paul, inspired by God, wrote a letter to the Romans, and he said it like this. What then? Are we better than they? He's actually talking about Jews and non-Jews who are called either Gentiles or Greeks. Are, are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned to some. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. He's speaking about human beings without God. And he sums it up a little bit later in verse 23 by saying, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Remember that quote from Toby Mac? I was made to love and be loved by you. God created human beings in his image, it says in Genesis 1.26. And the first two representatives, Adam and Eve, were asked to obey what God said and walk and talk with him. And they did until this one day where they thought, you know what, I know better than God. This talking snake, Satan, has made me realize that I know what's best, not him. And they disobeyed. And the whole world changed. Everything changed. We became broken, sinful. And people like to say, and I understand this, people say, yeah, but who cares what they did? Why does that have an effect on me? I didn't have anything to do with that. Well, the Bible's meant to be a mirror. That as we read it, and then when we're really honest with ourselves, and we really look at it, we say, yeah. I would have done the same thing. They might have represented me because they do represent me because I would have done the same thing. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are made to be with God, but there we cannot be because there's a gap. This didn't come out right because I don't know how to format things, but it should have said, holy God, and then on the other side, sinful people. There's a gap between a holy, 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 and anytime something is repeated in Hebrew, that means it's really important. Anytime it says holy, 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 you better pay attention. Because they didn't have bold, they didn't have um, underline, they didn't have italics, they had to repeat things to get emphasis. And it says God is holy. Holy, holy. The word holy means set apart. He's other. He's the creator of heaven and earth. We are sinful creatures, and there is a gap between us. Now, as humans, we're pretty good at trying to fill that gap. We can feel it. We know something's wrong, but we, we don't know what it is, so we try and fill it with things, with money or fame or power or pleasure or all these kind of different things. And the, the religions of the world, they tell us you can fill that gap. I looked up some, some of the, 
the world religions. In Buddhism, you have four noble truths. And it literally said, as I was reading it, it said, you do this, you do this, you do this, and you do this. Same with Islam. Islam prides itself in, in these five pillars. But the five pillars are things that you had better do. You had better go to this place. You had better say this creed. You had better pray this many times a day and all this kind of stuff. There's a gap between creatures and a holy, holy, holy God. And religions say, you do this thing in order to fill that gap. The Bible comes along and says, I, God, I filled that gap. I filled that gap. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And you probably know the second verse up there. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. Religion says you do these things to fill in the gap. The Bible says God has done this thing to fill in the gap. We might ask, well, how did he do that? On the cross. On the cross. Again, Paul, in Romans chapter 3, hear these words of God speaking to you. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We have been made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in past times. For he was looking ahead and including them in what would be what he would do in this present time. God this, did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Well, Pastor Jefferson, so I'll, I'm with you. There's this gap, and I, I'm a sinful person, I'll admit that. But what do I do? Jesus' message is simple. His message was, repent and believe the good news. The word repent literally means to, to turn around. You're traveling in this direction, living for yourself. God's not in your life. You're all those things that are listed there um, with no peace, nothing. And you literally turn toward God and believe the good news that he paid the price for our sins. That me, sinful Jefferson, my sin was paid for when sinless Jesus died on the cross. I get his freedom. He took my punishment. I want to explain one other thing. I said to repent, turn to our God, and believe the good news. I want to tell you about this word, believe. See, the Bible was originally inspired by God to be written down in Greek. Now, I am not in any way, shape, or form a Greek scholar. If you want to go to a church with a Greek scholar, go up Route 18 to my friend Rich Herbster. He teaches Greek at the seminary. If you want a church with a Greek scholar, go to Mount Pleasant EPC. I'm not a Greek scholar, but I had to take a class, and I have computer software that I know how to use because I took the class. And this word 
that is translated into English as believe. I put it up there for you for your Greek lesson for the day. Pisteo. Pisteo. And I want to share with you its two aspects. Because it does mean to acknowledge with your mind, but it also means to trust. And the example that I love, some of you have heard this before, and I'll say, oh, here he goes again. Some of you maybe never heard of this. There was a guy named Charles Blondin, and in 1859, Mr. Blondin, who was a tightrope walker, he put a tightrope across Niagara Falls from the American side to the Canadian side. He went back and forth on that tightrope several different times. In fact, I read that one time he took some kind of a portable stove with him and cooked an egg while he was on the high wire walking across Niagara Falls. He was the Nick Walenda. If you've ever seen him, he's the guy that's gone over the volcanoes and, and the cities in the current day. In 1859, that's who Charles Blondin was. Well, he went across Niagara Falls on his tightrope. Then he went across on the tightrope with a wheelbarrow. He goes across his high wire with the wheelbarrow, and he gets to the other side, and they ask the people, do you believe that he could do that again? And they all shout, yes, we just saw it. That was the coolest thing. He can do it again. They asked him again, no, 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 listen to what I'm asking you. Do you believe he can do it again. Oh, he's wonderful. This is the most amazing thing we've ever seen. Of course he can do it again. A third time. No, listen to what I'm asking you. Do you believe that he can take that wheelbarrow across the high wire? And all the people say, we told you we believe it. We just watched it. We know this guy can do it. And then they ask one of them, then get inside the wheelbarrow. Now, if you get into that wheelbarrow and let Charles Blondin take you across Niagara Falls, you don't just acknowledge, you trust with your life. That's the, the connotation, that's the definition this Greek word pisteo has. And it's all over the New Testament. It's in John 3.16, whoever believes in him. Whoever trusts in what Jesus did on the cross shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's in that verse that the kids said today. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in what he has done. And then once you do, you realize that the ability and the desire to turn toward God is a gift from him in the first place. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed or trusted. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. There's some amazing things that happen when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ. When you repent and believe that he died for your sins, John 1, 12 says you're a child of God. You're a son or daughter of the living king. You have that relationship, that eternal life that you are made for. And you will live forever, and you do what you were made to do. Remember Toby Max quote, I was made to love and be loved by you. Now, I will tell you, and you probably know, that a lot of times the gospel message that I give to you today is presented in this way. Receive this so you don't go to hell. That is part of the message. The Bible tells us that, that apart from Jesus, we will be eternally apart from God. So if you ignore this message... It's to your peril. I don't like to present it necessarily that way because that, in my mind, is just the icing on the cake. That I get to be with God forever. I get to know Him right here and right now. In the things that are going on in this life, I get that eternal life, that relationship with God. So I'm not trying to scare you or manipulate you or anything like that. But the way this was first presented to me was with this question. 
Do you know that you know that you know that you will be with God forever? And as a young freshman going into my sophomore year of high school, I, I was like, no, I, I don't. How do I know that? And I was told to turn to God and believe that he paid the price to fill that gap on the cross. You may say, Pastor Jefferson, I appreciate that, and I thank you for sharing that. Because I have to do That's what I'm called to do. This is the message I'm called to preach. You might say, you know what, I even agree with you, but I'll, I'll tend to that later. I'll get to that later. God and I will square up. It'll be all good. Again, I'm not trying to scare you or manipulate you. I'm just being real. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know what is around the bend for any of us. So if you don't know God, now and forever, if you if you if something's missing and you aren't wholly, fully human, because you're not connected to the one that made you, to love you and to be loved by him. Here's my question. Do you know God? And if not, why wait? Today is the day. You literally just pray, Lord, I'm tired of going down this road. I am so sorry. I've done all these sinful things. You do sinful things because you're a sinner. Please forgive me. And he forgives you and turns you around, calls you his son or calls you a daughter, and then calls you to grow rooted into Jesus to worship him, to pray, to come to know him better. So my challenge to you, my challenge to myself, there's a song that we sing here that has a line, and I can't quote it uh, word for word, but it says, those who long to hear it are those who know it best, or something like that. I need to hear this message. I need to be reminded of this message, and I have a seminary degree. I need to know God. Uh, to know that he forgives me, pay for my sins on the cross. And as I trust in him, I'm made right with him. I'm fully who he created to be, loved by him, and so that I can love him. If you don't know the Lord today, today is the day to know him. And enjoy being with him forever. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that, that were willing to listen to this this morning. And again, I'm not trying to scare anybody or, or manipulate anybody or any emotions or things like that. I just, I'm thankful for the opportunity to share the message that we are all about. And along with that comes a lot of fun things, like the preschool and, and singing the songs and acting goofy with the moves and all that kind of stuff. But I just would not have felt right if our preschool kids came through this program, if our church people came here week after week, and they weren't given the opportunity to say, Lord, I need you as my Lord and Savior. So Lord, I pray now if there's anyone here, if there's anyone watching, if there's anyone that watches this months and years from now who doesn't know you, that would say, I need my sins forgiven. I need, I need to be a new creation. I need to know what it is to be a son or daughter of the living God. Lord, today they would just turn to you in their hearts, say, I confess my sins. And Lord, understand that you make them a new creation. They are born again, born from above, however you want to define it, Lord. Now and forever. Oh, Lord, I pray that if there's anyone that uh, received that message today, maybe for the first time, that they would share it later with myself or with someone else, and that they would grow closer to you. Now, Lord, I know there are those here, and I know there are those watching online that they said, okay, Pastor Jefferson, I understood that message. I, I, I turned to the Lord. I repented. I, I believed. And, Man, I need to hear that again. I began thinking that I was doing it. I was doing all the work, and you reminded me that, that Jesus did all the work. So we need to hear that message. And Lord, I pray that, that we would just be renewed in the grace, the amazing grace we're going to sing about at the end here. And Lord, that you would be glorified in all that is said and done. 
Oh, we need you. We love you. We praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We respond to God's word a number of different ways, and one way is to go to him in prayer. Um, I will ask if there's anything anyone would like to share, any praises or um, concerns that, that as a whole group we can lift up before the Lord this morning. near your home this morning. Yeah. And all those young drivers, I know we had uh, Southside Prom this past weekend, and well, um, my son's on the road, a lot of your kids are getting to be on the road, just pray for the safety and travel, and for those of you that are preschool and think, that's a long way away, now it's not long way away. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord and pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be gathered here. We thank you for the freedom we have to be gathered here today. Lord God, we think about what's going on in our world. We know that the, in this the place, the very place where you walked on planet Earth, bombs are going off, rockets are being fired. And Lord, we, we need you. We need your peace. We need your love. We need your mercy. We pray for whoever was involved in this accident this morning. Thank you, Lord, so much for those who respond to that at 3.30 in the morning. Thank you for our volunteer firefighters here in Hanover Township and in Hooks Temple. We thank you for those that, that serve us in so many different ways, policemen and women doctors, nurses, teachers, administrators. Lord, we thank you for them. We praise you for the preschool. And thank you for each young man and young woman and the joy that they had being in this place. And Lord, the weirdest of all school years. Thank you for Mrs. Casado and Mrs. Fab and, and others who came in from time to time to help out uh, when need be. Thank you for these parents I went back and forth between being here and not being here, wearing masks and not wearing masks. Lord, it just was, was a bizarre circumstance. And we thank you for seeing us through it. We ask for your mercy upon these kids as they grow older. That the, the things that they were singing about and knowing about today would be deep in their hearts and in their beings. Lord, we pray for situations that we didn't mention out loud that are dear and close to our hearts. Pray for those who are struggling um, with health issues. We pray for your healing upon them. Those that are struggling with cancer, your healing upon them. We do pray for our leaders, Lord. Sometimes it's harder than others, but we pray for our leaders. The local level, the state level, the national level. That they would find wisdom in you and turn to you. And Lord, the truth would be spoken and known. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are persecuted, who can't gather freely like this because of their faith. We pray for missionaries that share that word to others. Lord, we thank you and praise you and love you. We desperately need you. And we come before you as one body praying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of Christ. Another way we respond to God's word is by giving. We give of our time, of the abilities he's given us. 
and the resources he's given us in the first place. I believe a couple of our preschoolers are going to be the ushers to come forward and receive tithes and offerings given in faith. for these gifts that have been given. I pray that they would be used, that the message of grace in Jesus would go out throughout Hanover Township and your world. And Lord, that you would provide for every one of our needs. Thank you for those that have given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Usher. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, before our our closing song. Again, preschool families, thank you so much for being here. Um, you are welcome anytime. If you have a church that you normally go to, by all means, please go there. But if you don't, um, you're welcome here at 11 o'clock. Sunday school is at 9.30. Um, I will tell you that uh, after the benediction, the blessing, um, if you need to go, we, we certainly understand, but we invite the whole congregation to stay. After the benediction, we're going to be presenting the preschool kids with their diplomas for this school year. Um, and then following that, there's cupcakes and all kinds of good stuff to uh, enjoy together out in the fellowship hall. Session, elder session members, you know who you are. We meet 6.30 this coming Tuesday. The confirmation class, who knows who they are, um, at 2 o'clock this afternoon. 
Um, at 4.30 this evening is prayer night. We always invite uh, the other churches to come and uh, bring a lawn chair. We sit out here and just pray and ask for God's mercy upon our, our land, upon his land, in this nation. Um, in the year, in the Christian year, next week is Pentecost. And it's fun to wear red because on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and looked like tongues of fire on people's heads. So we're red next week just for fun on Pentecost Sunday. Final two things that, especially for preschool families, Vacation Bible School this summer will be at Mill Creek. That's the one right next to Southside School. It'll be from 9 to noon. Uh, Monday through Friday, July 19th through the 23rd. Um, so everyone is welcome at that. It's sort of like chapel all the time. They get to sing songs, they get to do crafts. Chapel and preschool combined. They get to do crafts, they get to have snacks, play games, learn a Bible lesson. Um, we would look forward to having your kids at Vacation Bible School. It's a combined effort of Mill Creek Church, this church, Frankfurt Springs, and Hookstown Free Methodist. Again, the dates are on the back of your bulletin. Final announcement that concerns you as well. Um, we have, for many years, had a float in the Memorial Day Parade in Hookstown, a preschool float, and we plan to have one again this year. I'm so excited that the parade is happening. Uh, what we do is we meet uh, near the uh, Hookstown Free Methodist Church, and um, we have a, a wagon that we will ride on, and you can wave and, and do all that kind of stuff. We have water bottles we've been collecting that put a little bracelet on it that say, Hanover Church, Jesus loves you, and we pass out to the crowd. Um, but you are all welcome. That will be on Memorial Day, about 10, I think, or a little before 10, we meet at the... Uh, at the Hookstown Free Methodist Church, and um, if anyone would like to donate water, we're, we're aiming for 450 water bottles, and we have a really good start on that. I think we're about halfway there. Um, so if you want to donate a case of water, drop it off at the church anytime, and that goes for anyone. Anything I'm forgetting? Any other announcements? Our closing song is, is an old, faithful, amazing tune. Just talking about this amazing free love that God filled that gap for us on the cross. Let's stand and sing Amazing Grace.
after the benediction, if you would just remain in your seats for our preschool graduation, unless you have to go, like I said, we understand that. And then don't forget, afterwards, we have all kinds of good refreshments in the back. I pray that you will know God, that you will be loved and love Him, and receive that grace and that amazing love and forgiveness that He secured for us by filling the gap on the cross. Now receive the benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, but actually stay put. Amen.